A slow motion environmental disaster in California where a torrent of methane gas is spewing into the air. Thousands have been relocated. We turn now to what's being called the nation's biggest environmental disaster since the 2010 BP oil spill. A runaway natural gas leak above Los Angeles has emitted more than 150 million pounds of methane since late October. Thousands of residents in the community of Porter Ranch have been evacuated. Two schools have been closed and more than 2,000 families forced into temporary housing. The leak is coming from a natural gas storage facility owned by the Southern California Gas Company or SoCal gas. In October, one storage well, 8,500 feet underground, started leaking. Started leaking both natural gas and the additive that they put in natural gas to give it that rotten egg smell so you know when you have a leak. And the people of Porter Ranch, California, which is in Southern California, San Fernando Valley, they live about a mile downwind of this natural gas storage field. And when it started leaking, they got a really big whiff. And since then, for weeks now, since October, the gas company has been trying to stop that leak, but it hasn't worked. My name is Jackie Swift. My name is Yolanda Sabio. My name is Sandy Naiman. My name is Jennifer Milbauer. My name is Alexandra Nagy. I'm the Senior SoCal Organizer with Food and Water Watch. I live in Porter Ranch. I live in Porter Ranch. I've been living here, it'll be 35 years in November. I live in Chatsworth and it's actually uh, about three miles as the crow flies from the leaking well up here. I, I knew I smelled gas. Right away we saw people getting sick, um, nosebleeds, headaches, vomiting, nausea, skin rashes and irritations. About September, mid-September, my daughter started getting a rash all over her body. And we didn't really know what caused it. We thought, um, you know, laundry detergent, soap, you know, all of those things. We changed out everything in the house. She started going to doctors. We started doing allergy tests. She was getting it every single night when she would come home or if she was in Porter Ranch in just the general area. We were all suffering, you know. My, my son had, his eyes were bothering him so much that he would sit there and pull at them and rub them constantly. And um, for me, I had, you know, burning eyes, dizziness, headache. My son had stomach aches a lot. My husband had, his sinuses were impacted completely. Sharp pain in, on this side of my head, and I never had that pain before. I don't get headaches. But I started getting, waking up in terrible pain. Nothing would work. No Advil, Tylenol, nothing. My sinuses closed off. It took us about a month of organizing to get a relocation order from the County Department of Public Health, which ended up with, you know, by the end of all of this, the, the leak has been capped now about four months later, 15,000 people relocated from their homes voluntarily. Then the blowout happened in the gas, and we started to think, I wonder if this could be related. And we went away for four days, and her rash disappeared. We came back home. Within half an hour of being back in our home in Porter Ranch, the rash reappeared. We asked to be relocated because we thought, we need to just get out of here. This is not okay. At the point that we asked to be relocated, the gas company was telling us, oh, don't worry, it dissipates, it goes up in the atmosphere, you know, Porter Ranch is affected, you just can go anywhere in the valley and we'll be fine. So we came to Chatsworth thinking, okay, that's good enough. In the beginning, you know, all of the, all of the emphasis was on Porter Ranch. You know, people from Porter Ranch were sick, people from Porter Ranch were feeling the effects. And, you know, it took a while for people to realize it's not just Porter Ranch, it's Chatsworth, Northridge, Granada Hills, all of the neighboring communities. This house that we've been relocated to so nicely is still within the five mile radius. 
I said, look, our neighbors are relocating. We're in the same zip code. The day that they offered relocation, I called. We were one of the first. I have one little boy, he's six. He actually is on the autism spectrum. So if you're familiar with that at all, um, you know that change is really you know, a struggle for kids on the spectrum. And you know, he likes routine and consistency. When the you know, mandate to relocate happened, I, my husband and I had to sit down and really weigh out our option. Let's try air purifiers. That works when you're in your house with all the doors closed, but then you're a prisoner of your own home and that's really no way to live. My son's service dog became violently ill. We're done. I don't care if we go to a hotel room the size of my closet, we're out of here. One of the concerns that I had was, I'm a grandmother of two, three and five, you know, my grandsons would love to come visit me, but I did not feel comfortable having them come visit me. So that was one of the reasons also why I said, yeah, I have to relocate. Because I don't want them exposed. I don't know the long lasting effects of this. Um, the doctors are at a loss because they're not being told what the chemicals are. They can't help my daughter at the moment. We're doing blood test after blood test. We don't even know what's in there, you know? And I've been saying all along, they need to bring that broken casing pipe up and they need to tell us every single contaminant that they find on there. We have a right to know. This is what we've been breathing in. It's just a whole, one big scam and I think the community really understands that and it, they, it's waking them up to just kind of oil and gas in general, climate change, um, and why we need to rapidly transition off of gas and off of fossil fuels. I was never an activist. I was never interested in pursuing anything. I like to hide in the background. I'm one of those people who doesn't want to be looked at or talked to about anything, but somebody needs to do something. We've got some great people in our community who are suddenly activists that found themselves in this role. And anything that I can do, my daughter can do, any of us can do to make this story come forward so we can get some help and so this never happens again. Um, I'm, I've got to do it. I've got to do it for the sake of my family. Climate change was on my radar, but it was never something that I woke up every day and felt so passionately to fight for um, a change in what we're doing. And now I do, because now I completely understand it affects me personally. It's affected the life of my child, my whole family, and my entire community. There's no denying what's happening, you know? Not only did they destroy an entire community, they are destroying the earth. So it's not just a Porter Ranch problem. It's not just a San Fernando Valley problem or a California problem. It's a global problem. One of the reasons why I got involved and even more involved towards the end of this disaster is because I've been thinking people are going to go back to their lives. They're going to forget about this. They, they want to forget about this. I don't want to forget about this. I want to remember and prevent anything like this from ever happening again.